Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 9, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue a discussion about God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing and discussing God's creation of the human conscience, how it operates, why it was created, and the role the conscience plays in the processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 26th of December 2017 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. Why God created the human conscience? Why did God give us a conscience? <laughs> well, as we've seen through already through our discussion, God loves the truth. And God also knows that the truth is what makes us happy mm -hmm. and, and contented and satisfied. He also knows that the truth is fascinating. And it's a, it's, he also knows that the truth is an aspect of love, mm -hmm. uh, a, a part of love. We, we, we need truth in order to open the door to love. Mm -hmm. So he knows all of these things. And, and then on top of that, he created us with this desire to experience his love because it's no good, like, just creating the human and then saying, oh, you're on your own now. <laughs> it's not a very loving thing to do. He wants us to experience his love. That's the reason why he created us. He knows his love feels good. Right. <laughs> it feels yeah. good to him. And he would like to share that love with us. Mm. And he knows that that love feels good, will feel good to us if we allow it to be shared with us. So, so given the fact that God has all of these wonderful, um, you could say, aspirations for us, mm -hmm. desires for us, he created as many mechanisms in our soul as possible to enable this love to eventually find its way into our soul. Mm. He also ensured that it would only find its way based on our desire. But in order to have a desire, we need to understand the truth first. And this is a very important thing to understand. Before you will have a desire on any matter, you must first know the potential on that matter. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, no desire is possible. For example, if you don't know there's such a thing as a beach, and you don't know there's such a thing as a sea with surf there. Mm -hmm. And you don't know there's such a thing as surfing. And there was a time in my life when I didn't know any of those things. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was sort of 10 years old, nine years old, I think it was. Never been to the beach my whole life mm -hmm. up till then. Never knew anything like surfing, body surfing, anything like that. Never seen it before. I lived on a river yep. and I've never seen the sea mm -hmm. for, for the first nine years of my life. Mm -hmm. And then my family took me to the sea the truth of it developed some desires mm. before then you didn't know it existed so you didn't desire to go there exactly yeah. i didn't yeah. even desire to go there now my parents had obviously seen the sea once or twice before not very mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. um, and but i had never never seen it never had a desire to visit it go there or anything like that and so when i did go there and saw the potential of it yeah that's when I developed some desires to surf and to be in the surf and go to the beach and enjoy myself on the beach and so forth. Yeah. Truth became, you can see in that example, truth becomes an important part of developing a desire. Mm -hmm. Without truth, no desire is really possible, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't know the potential. You don't know what's available to you. Yeah. So, so God created the conscience so that we would know what's available to us. And once we know, we now have the potential of having a desire for it. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Without knowing, we would never have the potential of having a desire for it. Yeah. So it's very important for us to understand that basic reason why God created the soul. There and are many other reasons, of course. But yes, that we'll basic go fundamental some of them. reason. Yeah, which is about the desire for God's love you're talking about. There. Yes, yeah. well, the desire, God created the conscience so that we eventually would know and come to understand that love, God's love, exists and God's love can be felt mm -hmm. and God's love can be imbibed by the human and God's love can be prayed for. The mechanism mm -hmm. of prayer, which is another mechanism of the, con of the soul, um, can be engaged and yeah. God created the awareness of this mechanism 
without the mechanism being engaged. Mm -hmm. And the way he did that was providing another mechanism, which is the supply of truth yeah. through, the, through the conscience. So that's the ultimate purpose of the conscience, is to lead us to God's love. Yes. Now, it has many side benefits, yes. obviously. <laughs> so let's, I'll, I'll just talk us through a list that we've got of those. Sure, so, sure. Um, God inbuilt a conscience mechanism into the human soul to provide God with the ability to communicate truth with all his children, even when those children are not able or did not want a love-based relationship with God. Yes, now this is an important factor, isn't it? Because if God didn't have the ability to communicate truth, firstly, the love relationship wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. But secondly, God knows that truth also has a lot of other benefits. Like we, we can live in harmony with it. We can avoid pain and suffering by knowing the truth and so forth. Mm -hmm. if, if there was no means of communicating truth for us to us, then at the end we'd be on our own having to go through a personal painful experience in order to discover any truth yeah. and and a lot of the truths we could discover simply through god talking to us about them compared to what we would have to do to discover them by experience mm -hmm. like could could result in millions of years difference of time yeah. being used yeah uh, just because we didn't know and we had to go through experience. And the thing with experience is you don't know what to experience in order to ex eventually come to experience it. So it's a bit like me in the previous example I gave with not uh, with Not going to the beach, the beach. Yep. like if I didn't know for all of my life that there was such a thing as a beach mm -hmm. and such a thing as sea and such a thing as surf, I would never have a desire to surf, never. Yeah. Right, and and so this is what God's trying to do: share the truth. Now desires can develop. Yeah, the very important factor. Yeah. Okay, um, God gave us the conscience, conscience, so that His children are provided with the ability to be happy by being able to avoid compensatory experiences. And remember, we have had all that discussion about compensation. Mm. Mm. Um, so this knowledge of truth means that, okay, I can avoid some, you know, corrective compensation. Which is always um, painful, which is most, always painful, most of the time painful yeah. emotionally. Yeah. So that conscience enables us to avoid that compensatory process, even if we don't want a personal relationship with God. So it's another very loving provision by God, isn't it? Saying mm -hmm. you don't have to connect with me. Mm -hmm. I, but I still want you to be happy. So here's this other mechanism to yeah. help you. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's uh, like, God doesn't need to create an encyclopedia for human life because God is the encyclopedia for human life. And if we just connect with the conscience, we've now got that encyclopedia available to us, right? So, so God's basically saying, you guys all want a book to tell you what to do. Well, I'm the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's a mechanism that I've provided that you can listen to what I think is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. That will help you and make you happy. Or you can choose to ignore it. Mm. But it's in built in everybody, so nobody has to carry a book around. Yeah. <laughs> and also, we through the conscience, we can have factual information, mm -hmm. like having the book, without having to have painful experiences through which to, to sort of trial and error learn things. Mm. Yeah, yeah, what a large benefit that is, That's isn't great. it? That's great, yeah. <laughs> like, imagine trying to discover you know, some of the kinds of factual information relating to a relationship with God with, by personal experience mm. compared with God just telling you that it's possible. And how it's possible. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is where, like, you know, I'm just in the process of writing some material about, you know, my first century experience about discovering truth. And one of the very first things that I thought about in that place was, like, if God existed, then it would make a lot more sense for me to ask God about things. <laughs> <laughs> then it would for me to go through a process of discovery on through experimentation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, the conscience provides a way of receiving communication from God rather than relying on analysis of law. So mm. many of us are in this process since learning about law, the laws of compensation, attraction, cause and effect. We're analyzing, analyzing. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? What's this trying to show me about my soul? Whereas if we tuned into our conscience, boom, no more analysis. Yeah, necessary. and the problem with analysis is that it's very much dictated to by our emotional condition. 
So if I've got a poor sense of worth and, yeah. and there's a compensatory process that goes on that feels punishing, I'm going to think I'm being punished because I'm bad or something. Yeah. Right? Not, it's, not, it's not what the compensatory process is trying to teach me, but, but it's what I'll believe mm. through my analysis based on my emotional injury. Yeah. So, so the problem with an analysing thing through law is that it's prone to personal opinion mm -hmm. and therefore personal error. Error. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Also, to provide his children with the ability to know right from wrong without the need to determine right from wrong through painful compensatory experiences. So we've we've kind of mentioned that already. Yeah, and here an remember we're there. defining right and wrong as what is like loving and also, but what is going to make us happy and contented mm. in the long run? And not just us, but everyone. And everyone. Yeah. yeah. And wrong, what is going to make everyone or anyone unhappy? Mm. 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 Yeah. 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 Also, we have a conscience to provide us with an internal mechanism of adjustment, which then prevents us being forced into learning and observing through trial and error. We've sort of mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Or from having a slow learning experience or a learning process or experiencing lots of mistakes and lots of pain and suffering and mm. just tedium and trauma and all those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, you know, if a parent cares about their child, they don't like to see their child go through unnecessary suffering. Mm. And God, being a far more caring parent than any parent, is, has provided the conscious mechanism in order to prevent us from going through any unnecessary suffering. Yeah. The reality is we could, uh, we could go through life, given if things were different on the planet with regard to our acceptance of the conscience, we could go through life without having to experience pain at all. Any physical, emotional or spiritual pain mm. or any disease and, and, and sickness at all. Yeah. But, you know, obviously that depends upon the exercise of our will. Mm. 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 Absolutely. We also were given a conscience to help us understand morality, which is God's definition. Of what is right. Yes. God's definition of what is true. Yes. And to help us understand ethics. Which is the equality between two people of the same nature. So Two children of God, basically. Yeah, two children of God. So, yeah. you know, obviously morality is very different to ethics and ethics is asking the question, what would I like to have done to me? Mm -hmm. That's what I'll do to you. Mm -hmm. That's what ethics does. But morality says, well, no, even though you and I both accept the same thing, Yeah. From God's perspective, is, is, that, is that thing right? right? Yeah. Is that thing the truth? Yes. And we often have that situation, don't we, where I accept a certain level of things for myself and then I, I'm sort of from others and then I impose that upon the both of us as sort of an ethical mm. idea where I treat us both equally. Mm. But you're often saying, Morally, no. that's not good. No, you know? no, that's not God's view yeah. of what you should be accepting. Yeah, or how you should be treating yourself. And, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we also have a conscience to open us to the possibility of receiving God's love, which we've spoken about. And obviously that blissful joy that comes from receiving that love um, and, um, and the knowledge that that love brings to us, that we are a, sort of a beloved child of God and... Yeah, and an extension of that is that obviously God's uh, designed the soul to um, be an infinite creature that can infinitely expand mm. and, and therefore be infinitely transformed. Mm. But, but without the knowledge of that potential, which comes from the conscience, yeah. we probably wouldn't engage that potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really we can say that the conscience is there to assist us in this process from going from the natural man to sort of a divine being. being. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that transformation it, is possible. It's God basically telling you that it's possible Yeah. even before you knew it was possible yeah. and even before you engage the uh, probability of it by doing the things God suggests. Mm -hmm. He can even suggest to you what you need to do. That's how I found out what to do. Yeah. That, that it was an emotional process, that it was based on prayer, longing from the heart. That's how I found out what to do by mm -hmm. the conscience telling me, God mm -hmm. telling me through the operation of the conscience, this is what you do. 
yeah. to get my love. This is what you do. Yeah, beautiful. You know, and if, if in you can choose to follow it or not, depending well, on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you decide. Yeah. <laughs> So overall, we can say we God gave us a conscience to lead us towards love and truth. And to lead us into experiencing his love, love. Which, is a, which is a very, very powerful transformative process that will last, inf you know, potentially infinitely once we become immortal. So, yeah. so the, the beauty of what he's doing with the conscience is, is he's always looking at the end game. Yeah. <laughs> and the end game. God's, got, God's like that. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> always looking at the end game being our perfect happiness and bliss and our union state as a soul union and so forth. All of these things wouldn't be possible without God providing some information via the mechanism of the conscience. Yeah. So I've relied heavily on this mechanism all my life to be able to assimilate the truths that God's sharing with me. Mm. And it feels to me that this is a sad thing about humanity generally, is that because I've learnt to rely on people and learnt to rely on, you know, things being informed upon them and, and, and not really taking much action about them, they miss out on this personal information that comes directly from God through this mechanism. Yeah. And to my mind, what that does is prevent you from actually making any real transformation mm -hmm. and, and benefiting from the, the, the full uh, amount of the creations of God that have been made to, for our pleasure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, for, so for me, it's been an essential part, particularly when you're the first person who discovers many things, because being the first person, there's no one, you, you know, you think there's no one to tell you anything. And that's not true. God's got your conscience connection. Yeah. He, he can tell you. So yeah. even if, you know, eventually someone on the planet would have discovered the connection and listened to its operation yes. and made decisions to follow it. Yeah. And, uh, and I've been very fortunate to be the person who was first doing that on this planet. But, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's just a wonderful... Uh, mechanism that God has provided that you cannot, you know, to my mind, it's it's up, up there with free will, God's love, <laughs> conscience. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. And like there's lots of other functions and reasons why God gave us the conscience. Yeah. More than we could probably list or even, un even understand in our current state. Yes. Um, as is the way with all things God creates, but yeah. that's just a bit of a list that that's we've right. gone through there. Yeah. yeah. How the conscience assists me to in opening to God. <laughs> How does the conscience assist me or any person to receive God's love? Well, I suppose here again, there's a lot of things we need to remember about God's love. But the, fir the first is that opening to God is an action I need to take for myself. It's a decision I need to make a, 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 to engage prayer mm -hmm. in a sincere, heartfelt manner, uh, directed at God to receive God's love. So, so to open up to God, I need to eventually open my heart to God's love. That's what I need to do. Now, to open up to God's love, God's love can't prepare me to open up to God's love. So something else had to be provided to prepare me to open up to God's love. Mm -hmm. Now, that thing that was provided has to, is the conscience. It's, a, it's the avenue of truth that tells me God's love is possible. Mm -hmm. You can apply for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Applications open. Applications are open. Yep. And, uh, and you can do something about it. You can... You, but God, God won't force the love upon you. Mm -hmm. But the truth of that comes via the conscience too. He's not going to chuck it, force it down your throat, mm -hmm. as the saying goes. Well, and there's this lovely analogy that I've heard you give um, about sort of comparing our soul to a bottle mm -hmm. with a closed lid. Mm. So do you recall that? Would you like to go through that? Now you're recalling it. <laughs> you can recall it. Not really. <laughs> well, uh, well, I can give you the rough broad strokes, but you'll probably be able to fill it in. So, I when no, if it needs filling in, <laughs> <laughs> the the obviously the bottle, if it's got a lid on it, you can pour water on it, 
but the water isn't going to go through the neck of the bottle and into the bottle. Yeah. And if you liken your soul to a bottle yeah. with a lid on it, yeah. unless the lid's removed, God's love can't flow. Remember God's love being compared to water here. The water can't flow. You tip the water over the top of the bottle and the water just goes everywhere, but not in the bottle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's really what it is for God's love a lot of the time. God's love being poured everywhere in the universe, but just not in the human yeah. soul bottles. Yeah. Uh, we have to open our heart, uh, which is like opening the lid of the bottle. And now the love can flow. And this is, this is when I heard you speak about it. You spoke very beautifully about the conscience being the mechanism the preparatory mechanism that opens, opens the, the bottle. bottle. Yeah. yeah, truth is the thing that opens the bottle and the conscience is the mechanism via which we receive truth directly from yes. God. So therefore, yeah. it is the primary mechanism to yeah. open the bottle. So the opening of the bottle happens through the receipt of truth into the soul. Mm. Um, and acting upon it. And the action. So the, the, obviously once it's received, we're going to act on it. Not necessarily. You can receive, you can, you can hear truth as we've already discussed in this section, but not act upon it. You can choose to ignore it. Right? So once, once a truth is received into, into my soul, properly, emotionally, emotionally, now you will act. Yes. Yes. So you, you will, will always act on truth once it's received. Once it's emotionally received. Yes. yes. You, yep. you will always act. Hearing it. Well, you know, lots of people hear truth every day and do mm. nothing. Yeah. But, but once it hits you in the soul emotionally, there's a high likelihood you'll act upon it then. And that's what God designed it to be too. The conscience is a mechanism by which you can receive truth, but it was still a decision up to you. And this is where it comes down to. <laughs> so, yeah. I had to come to know that God's love was available, firstly. Yep. Now, God's the conscience is the mechanism that tells me that. I had to know how it was available, God's the conscience mechanism, God telling me that through the conscience mechanism tells me that. I had to know what I had to do to receive God's love. The conscience mechanism does that too. <laughs> it shares that truth with me. I have to know how to receive, to remove the blockages within me that prevent me from receiving God's love. The conscience mechanism tells me what blockages I have and how to remove them. So how important is the conscience mechanism in the end to you receiving God's love? Mm. Quite intensely important. Now, for many people on the planet, they haven't had to develop their conscience mechanism because I've developed mine and then shared the truth I've discovered with them. Right? But how do they trust it? At the end of the day, I'm just a guy saying what I believe truth to be and maybe demonstrating that through my own actions or whatever. But even so, I'm just a guy demonstrating what I think is the truth to be. That's all. There's no confirmation from any other source other than the conscience. So, so again, the conscience can encourage you to listen to a person who's actually learnt all these things and apply what they're saying as mm. well. The mm. conscience can do all of those things. Now, to my mind, the conscience is, a, is one of the, like, the strongest tools God has available to help the relationship with God, to help you as an individual become aware of the relationship that's possible. And without the conscience mechanism, no one on the planet would actually know that the relationship with God is possible, mm. including myself. Mm -hmm. Well, primarily yourself. Primarily myself, yeah. because at the, at the moment, a lot of people have been listening to me about the relationship. Mm -hmm. But the reality is I would never have discovered it without this mechanism. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it's a, a key part of the discovery of God's truth, mm -hmm. of divine truth. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, it's a, a very, very important pro, you know, process to actually open up to your conscience and become more and more sensitive to it and, and to start the process of ignoring, processing through, but ignoring the yell and scream of your own emotional injury and also your own opinions. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to your own happiness, holding on to your own opinions has various levels of, you know, problems associated with it, as we've discussed. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so my feelings are if you can give up your own opinions and, and give up holding on to your own emotions and be humble enough to just let them all go as needed and be open to the conscious mechanism, you will discover God's truth and you will eventually also receive God's love because you'll act upon God's truth. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. Thank mm. you. <laughs> How the conscience assists me to grow closer to God. Can listening to my conscience help me to develop a relationship with God more quickly? So I think in the previous answer, you've answered this very firmly in the affirmative. Well, in the previous answer, the flavour of the answer I was trying to give was how the beginning of the relationship with God is, you know, just establishing the beginning of the relationship. Here I feel, let's, let's, let's now in this question work through, okay, I've begun my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. how, does, how does my conscience assist me to continue this relationship with God more quickly and develop it more rapidly and, and, and to have less resistance to the process of development of the relationship? Like that's okay. where I feel, you know, that we need to focus our attention sure. here. Sure. So, so the beauty of God, of the conscience now, when it, when it's fully functioning and if, if it's uh, if I'm sensitive to it, is once I've established the truth that God's love exists, the problem I face when I'm developing is that God's love flows to me to a certain degree, and then it stops because I'm out of harmony with further inflow of the love. There's something's within me that I'm incapable of seeing myself, that uh, I, I don't know what they are, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, why it's not flowing, right? So in this state, I'm wondering all the time, like, what, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, mm -hmm. the conscience, if I'm sensitive to it, can help, God through the conscience can tell me what I need to do. Yeah. So, you know, it can show me. So remember God's also got all the God's laws doing that and all of the other things that God's doing. So the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, and the law of compensation are all trying to show me already. Yep. But, but those things, like I said, are sometimes difficult to interpret. But God's uh, feelings on a matter, not difficult to interpret, mm -hmm. just straight out. If I'm sensitive enough, if I can develop this sensitivity, I can feel God's feelings on the matter and that will tell me this is what I need to do and I'll be convinced. Now, I've had literally thousands of those times where, where, where I've, been, I've felt absolutely stuck. I don't know what to do in terms of continuing the development of my relationship with God and allowed God to tell me through the operation of the conscience, this is what it is. And as soon as I do, as soon as I allow, I go, that's exactly what I need to do. And that's, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that before, you know, that, that's kind of thing. But that's exactly it. I need to do that. And sure enough, when I do that, I make some progression, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's many, many times that I've had that experience. And it's only ever been my emotions of fear in particular that have prevented me from having that experience. Yeah. But the conscience mechanism gives me this ability to continue my progress without needing some person to come along and tell me what's going on and because god knows what's going on mm -hmm. all i've got to do is be open enough to hear it from him mm -hmm. and then i'll know mm -hmm. what to do mm -hmm. and how to do it and this is where i feel you know this is the major impact upon our future development of our relationship with yeah. god yeah yeah yeah, and I'm looking forward to, in our next discussion, talking to you a lot more about how we can become more sensitive to our conscience because, as you say, that's invaluable to yeah. have that assistance. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that God's always trying to share truth with me is an indication of God's care for me personally. Yeah. Now, if, I, if I've got problems with my self-esteem or my self-worth, I might not believe that God cares for me personally. But the fact that God's always trying to tell me the truth and share the truth with me through my conscience, always trying to communicate with me, is an indicator that at least will affect me intellectually and go, okay, I know that God must care for me, even though I don't feel it yet. Yeah. Because I'm getting this communication all the time, trying to get him, he's, he's trying to inform me all the time about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's a, another thing that's helped me a lot, that yeah. understanding that 
there are times when I feel really bad and really terrible and knowing that God's still communicating with me, trying to tell me the truth about things, I know that God loves me even though I don't often love myself or, or often feel God's love. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. It also helps uh, me to be more open to God's ideas and concepts about everything. So quite often I'm, I'm making personal decisions inside of myself and going things like, this is my opinion, but what's God's opinion? Because I've found in, in the past that wherever my opinion and God's opinion disagree, that's where I've got things to work on, mm-hmm. you know, that's preventing my progress. Mm-hmm. So what's my opinion? What's God's opinion? If I know my opinion, because sometimes I've even done this where I've, you know, put a line down the middle of yes. my opinion. Mm-hmm. You've seen some of the of those. I do it myself, yep. Yeah, and then down the other side, I know God's telling me what God's opinion is here. Here's yeah. God's opinion. Here's my opinion. Okay, this shows me that my opinion differs to God's opinion. Now I know where I need to do some work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whatever that work whatever might be. Whatever it is, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I might even not know what that work is. At least now I can be open to what it may be and ask God about that too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he, uh, the conscious also provides us with emotional sensory information from God about our thoughts, feelings, words, desires, intentions, and so forth. So, so in other words, what it's doing is it's saying to me, this is how God feels about that thought. This is how God feels about that feeling I'm having. Mm-hmm. This is how God feels about that thing that I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. Now, this, this lets me make choices and decisions more easily because I can go, oh, I'd like to do that. But what I'm feeling from God, that that's not a good idea. Yeah. This yeah. would be a better idea. Yeah. Right. Because this is more in harmony with what I'm feeling from God to from be God. the truth. Yeah. So it helps me give up my own uh, opinion or idea about what I should do Mm -hmm. and start to allow myself to feel what God feels would be the best thing to do. Yes. And this always increases my happiness because obviously, you know, there are times when I make mistakes and therefore, you know, obviously have some unhappiness as a result. Mm -hmm. The more I can just do things God's way, even though at times I think it's quite confronting. You know, sometimes I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But the more I know what to do and then say, and I've learnt through experience, of course, that the better thing to do is to do what God's asking or what God's saying is a better thing to do and work through whatever emotional things you feel as as to why you don't want to um, than it is to actually do what you want to do, only to find out that you're going to be unhappy doing it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, he also... uh, Like, it feels to me that it also helps me be humble to my emotions because it's sort of like... Um, if God's truth is such and such about my feelings, but my feelings are something completely different, then I know I'm not humble in that area to feel you know, God's truth about the matter. Yep. And then I know, ah, oh, to actually get to the point where I can listen to God's truth about that matter and actually have it enter my heart, I've got to work on this opposite emotion. Yeah. This opposite emotion that's stopping me from accepting God's truth about the matter. And what I need to do is some work on this opposite emotion, whatever mm-hmm. that opposite emotion is. So it might be anger or sadness or whatever that's opposing God's truth about the matter, or just an emotion associated with beliefs, you know, from childhood or whatever that opposes God's truth. And I know I need to do something about that. So now I've got a course of action to take, yes. which is a lot better than sort of sitting around going, what's going on? I've got no idea, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all the while here you're talking about this where we've, we've established a relationship with God, but somehow we feel stuck all of a sudden. Yeah. So yeah. here we're developing our relationship with God further. And there are times in that process where we are stuck or we, can't, mm-hmm. we don't know how to proceed forward. And obviously it's the conscience, the mechanism of the conscience where God's telling us the truth, where God can tell us, this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. This is what you need to do. This is the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. This is your best option. And uh, if you listen to it or you're sensitive to it, you can go ahead and do it. Yep. And uh, and obviously you need a desire to go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. And I've learned over, over time to have a desire to go ahead and do everything that God basically suggests. Because at the end of the day, I'm always going to progress and it's going to get better for me. So, so it sort of helps me there as well. But it also helps me with logic as well. Because quite frequently, our emotional condition 
causes us to be illogical and, and like we often make illogical choices and decisions when we're in an illogical state emotionally. Or we reason. We reason well. in a warped yeah. manner. Yeah. And, and so therefore that then causes us to make decisions based on our reasoning that destroy our progress or, or harm us in some way or harm others. And, and the beauty of God's truth is it's always logical. It's always like right on the ball, right on, you know, right, factual every time. And, and it always makes sense as well. It's never, it's never out of harmony with, with logical reasoning. So, so what it does is, is it helps me go, ah, here's my reasoning, which not all the time logical, mm -hmm. but here's God's reasoning, all the time logical. If I can accept that and give up my own reasoning and opinions more, then that means that I'll be more logical in my day-to-day yeah. -day life and therefore everything will be smoother and more e easy, more easy to engage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it helps there as well. Yeah. Yeah. What other things uh, have, have I not covered? Uh, well, you've covered a lot of this yeah. and I think some of these are now more general about just helping if we can analyse um, the fact that even the conscience exists <laughs> must mean that God desires for us to be happy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, individually and collectively yep. um, and that we're not continually plagued by mistakes and feelings of unhappiness. If we can even rationally see that, then that makes us feel more open towards God, doesn't it? It, wants us, it helps us to want to develop that relationship further. And yeah, and even, but even if we don't want to develop a relationship, like we just want to be in the place of natural love all of the rest of our life, what I like about the conscience is God's, the conscience basically confirms to us that that's okay. You're allowed to make that decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not like punish, punish, punish for making that decision or you're a bad person for making that decision. That's not how God feels. Because mm. if you can feel what God feels about you making that decision, he says, okay, that's your decision. It's, it's going to have its downsides. Yeah. Which, which are that you're not going to be as happy or blissful as you could be. Yeah. But that is your call. You're allowed to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And you feel that confirmation. So instead of feeling this, you know, most religious uh, people feel this real condemnatory thing where you do things God's way or it's hellfire type of yeah, yeah. feeling, you know, that it's hell's for you. It's not like that at all. And, and, and in fact, the conscience mechanism is, allows God to tell you that it's not like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, that, you know, that's a good thing too. Yeah. 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 A mm. um, couple of the last ones we had there, helping all humans to be perfected in natural love, which makes us more open to the possibility of receiving God's love and being transformed into the divine creature God created as our potential. Yeah, so that's fairly obvious, I think, yeah. because your truth is what helps you be open to yeah. what is possible. And again, I think you've sort of covered this, but it allows us to internally compare God's truth. So if we hear God's truth mm. by the conscience with human ideas of what is truth mm. um, without needing help from other humans. And that yeah. helps us a lot with also letting go of erroneous versions of love i feel and helping us to see oh gosh engaging in this relationship with god is not something to be feared because in fact everything i've been taught is not the it's not what god actually feels about it yeah I, I, that's been particularly helpful for me because i in me this too. life in particular i've been very open to suggestion mm. from other people and 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 what i've had to come to do um is is to get to a stage where I'm looking at the suggestions from others and then also comparing that with God's truth coming from the conscience. Mm -hmm. And once I do that, I go, ah, oh, there's all these flaws in, these, in this stuff that's being said to me or yeah. the ways in which I'm being treated here. There's all mm -hmm. these flaws and God's showing me where the flaws are. Yeah. So that's been very, very helpful. It's very helpful for a person who has a poor sense of their own worth. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, it obviously can be very helpful in establishing, ah, oh, I need to stop listening to people like this who are, who are just being attacking or derogatory or, or, or harmful, and I need to only really listen to what God's saying about that particular issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So as we can see, the conscience does a lot to helping us develop this relationship with yeah. God. It's a very powerful tool that God has at his disposal to assist us to have a happier, more contented, blissful life. 
and and without it we would never be able to engage repentance or forgiveness to mm -hmm. be honest mm -hmm. because we wouldn't know what to repent for or what to forgive mm -hmm. because if you think about it the truth is that god's truth about everything shows us what is right and what is wrong yeah. therefore it shows us what we've done right and what we've done wrong and yes. what others have done right and what others have done wrong yeah. now if we didn't have that mechanism we'd be guessing yeah. what is right what is wrong you know if we listen to our parents and what they tell us is right boy you know we, according to them there's no forgiveness is necessary yes. you know because they never did anything wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'd be stuck Yes. In our relationship with God, in our potential progress and everything because of it. Mm -hmm. So so you can see, and we'll discuss more deeply in another session, how much of an impact the conscience is going to have yes, it's on the mechanism of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much for our discussion today. That concludes mm -hmm. session nine in our series on forgiveness and repentance. Uh, thanks for being with us. Just quickly, we'll just review what we've spoken about so far. Mm -hmm. So um, sessions one to three, we spoke about, we introduced you to the idea of God, God's truth and how to discern God's truth, the importance of God's laws and how God's laws operate. And then that was so we could tell you the truth about God's laws of forgiveness and repentance, mm -hmm. which we went on and did and gave you some information on how what what those how those laws operate what it's like engaging them and what our personal responsibility is in forgiveness and repentance mm. and then uh, you remember the sessions four to eight which were our last sessions before today we we focused your attention on the laws of compensation and we w went into that in quite a lot of detail we looked at the analogy of what you say you reap and, uh, and we also looked at the different ways in which you sow and reap. And, and hopefully by the end of that, we've given you a very good understanding of how the law of compensation interacts or promotes the laws associated with repentance and forgiveness. Yeah. So, and then today, our session nine, we've introduced you to compensation, uh, sorry, conscience. <laughs> It's been a long session for me today, <laughs> I'm a bit weary. So, um, not that I don't love this topic, which is the conscience, uh, the human conscience. And so um, today's been an introduction. In our next couple of sessions, we're going to further expand on the conscience and how it relates to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. So I feel this discussion about the conscience, I think most people are gonna be quite fascinated about it when mm -hmm. they listen to it. But the other thing is that it, 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 is, it does have a large bearing on the discussion about forgiveness and repentance, which is why we've had to include it in our discussion about forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. Because it, without the conscience, we would not know what to forgive or what to repent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'd be reliant on other people telling us what yeah. we should forgive and what yeah. should, we should <laughs> repent. And, and unfortunately, other people are not a very good source of information, no. <laughs> particularly when they've been damaged emotionally and, yeah. and have lived in the world that we've lived in too. So, so I feel the next couple of discussions will be very helpful for most people who are listening to our presentations and and help, helpful in the way when, that once we get to the actual feedback about forgiveness and repentance which is our goal here which mm -hmm. we'll be doing in a few sessions time we will have a very good foundational understanding about all the different factors that play in our triggering forgiveness and repentance and yeah. deciding and being motivated to actually engage forgiveness and repentance that's right, because we spoke a lot in compensation, didn't we, about how the, comp the operation of compensation can begin to help us grow this desire. Mm. We're going to learn how much the conscience, conscience does that does as that well. Too. Yeah. yeah, and without the conscience working in harmony with us, we would never have a motivation to actually forgive or repent. Yeah. So, so the conscience becomes a key factor in our choosing to forgive and repent. See, compensation is a factor in that it causes pain and suffering if we disagree or in disharmony with it, or it causes pleasure when we're in harmony. 
But conscience is the thing that motivates us to action yeah. by doing something harmonious with truth. Mm -hmm. And without the conscience in operation, our desire to forgive and repent will not ever be developed. Mm. So this is why the conscience is such an important part of our knowledge when it comes to understanding how forgiveness and repentance works. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for our discussion today. Darling. Yeah, and thanks for your time, babe. I know it's been a long day. But... Yeah, look, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah. I love these discussions so much. Yeah. Um, it just just so happened that I didn't get much sleep last night. Yeah. That was all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, yeah, the, I think it's really wonderful that we've had the discussion with you guys as listeners, and because it, because of, while it might be information you've not heard much about in the past, you can see how essential it is to your future progression and mm. and uh, and I'm so, I'm so glad we're getting the opportunity or have, we have made the opportunity yeah. to share that information with you now even though nobody has ever really asked questions about the conscience mm -hmm. in the whole time that I've been presenting no, there's yeah. been no very not very, very many sincere questions about the conscience and I've really enjoyed preparing these outlines on conscience with you because we've had some great discussions and and we have reflected on how globally um as as humans on the earth today we are so out of touch with our conscience mm. and yet it's such a strong and powerful uh tool or, or mechanism. gift mechanism yeah. that can help our progression so mm. uh immensely and rapidly and mm. even if we don't as you've said in this discussion even if we don't even choose to have a relationship with god it can help bring us so much it, happiness mm. if we listen <laughs> yes if we listen to it yeah so so i feel that this discussion has been really beneficial for you guys and and um you know obviously we've done a lot of talking about these kind of matters in private mm. and this has been the first time we've had the opportunity to share the information in public and uh, in the future of course there's a lot more information that we have not had the opportunity to share in public either but uh, you can see that every new piece of information that we've not had the opportunity to share but is important information always adds to our ability to progress and, yeah. and so that's what why we've shared this information with you during this session of the laws regarding forgiveness and repentance so even though the discussion about the conscience seems unrelated mm -hmm. it is actually a very strong relationship between the conscience itself and your desire to forgive and repent mm -hmm. so we're going to discuss that more in our following sessions so we'd like to thank you guys for your time and listening to us and uh, also for the time of our helpers out the back there who are, who are switching these, this video for us. And obviously it's going to be a month or two before this video gets out. It's now the 26th of December today yeah. and, uh, um, and it's probably going to be a month or two before most of you get to receive this video because of the work we need to do to get it out. But uh, we're looking forward to you receiving it because to us it's a pretty important subject. Yeah. But anyway, we'd like to thank you for your time and uh, thanks, babe, for your thank help you, with Dawn. discussing the material yeah. and preparing it like you have. And thank you for Lena and Eloisa for doing the switching that they've been doing. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in another session, which will probably be for us in the new year. <laughs>